Hey everybody and welcome back. Right well, moving right along. Uh, nothing much to tell you this week. It's getting to be spring here. I know that because the cats keep appearing with mice and voles and things like that. If you've never woken up in the middle of the night and you hear this sort of crunch, crunch, squish, squish sound as uh, a cat chews the head off a particularly fat vole, then uh, you've missed something, believe me. Anyway, as there's nothing happening, we're going to get straight on. You see, I've taken the wheel, rear wheel out. We're going to do the rear subframe. Um, I had a couple of comments about my duct tape shirt, as I mentioned to uh, one comment about it. Linda buys all my work clothes, basically when she's down at the Salvation Army, sweatshirts and things like that. And uh, in fact, when I was at home working, I used to be known as the Oxfam man. Now those of you in the UK will know what I am referring to. Alright, so we'll get stuck in straight away and uh, see what we can get done this week. Alright, before we actually start work, I want to explain something from a comment. Now, we've got what, 8,500 subscribers and we've been going for a few years. And I think I've only ever had about four what you would call trolls. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, you know, people that were ignorant or in one or two instances simply offensive. But I do get a lot of comments from people, um, and I do like my comments, as you know, who take things, I would say, too literally, or, you know, too much book learning, if you want. Uh, a regular comment on the ships I used to go on was that uh, where engineering staff are a little bit secondary to deck crew they would say ask an engineer the time and he'll tell you how to build a watch and I do find people get tied up too much in things and don't look at the bigger picture now the comment in particular I had was you remember I measured how much the swinging arm moved to follow the chain line and I had a comment because I measured it here shouldn't I have measured it here now yes he is abs I'm saying he he is absolutely correct to be 100% accurate we should measure it here because this is going to move more but look at it it's what an inch or so so that's where I had if you're wondering why it's wobbling it's the heater blowing hot air out so this with it set there is my head's going to keep going in six and a half inches all right so if I put this where this is, right, we're on just fractionally over eight inches, maybe eight and a quarter. So if I move that to say just over 12, we're actually reading 10, oh, we're actually reading 11 inches. So we've gone from six and a half to 11 which is four and a half inches roughly it's actually a little bit less so somewhere between a quarter and a half an inch difference well you remember when I put this here <clears throat> we got to the four inch mark and we kept going to about six inches <clears throat> so relative to everything the measurements showed that the job was fine but as I say theoretically it should have been measured from there so don't worry about little things like that think it out if this had been right down here then yes there'd have been a big difference but it wasn't you know just look at the overall job very often to be honest close enough is good enough particularly with a trials bike we're not racing we're not building something that somebody's going to go here all in round corners at 100 miles an hour so tiny uh, inaccuracies don't matter all right so let's uh, get on actually i think i've got to put a new battery in the uh, in the camera and we'll talk about the subframe <clears throat> right now i'm going to start off by showing you this on the c15 <coughs> oh got a frog in my throat this morning all right the earlier otters don't forget were based on the bsa and i know charlie's used tiger cobria subframes which are the same design they're bolted top and down at the swinging arm mount and they have this type of rear suspension mount inside a piece of uh, 
plate like that sort of a u-shaped piece of plate now we're not going to do this that's why i'm just explaining to you what i'm going to do is make a stub for it to fit on a because i prefer that method uh, and b because it'll help you see the frame here is is right out when i've done it the frame is going to be on the inside of this mounting so i'm going to move this and consequently this tube in about an inch whatever the thickness of the tube is on each side so we're going to make the subframe a couple of inches narrower all right so let's go and look at what we're going to do right now <clears throat> actually it's not so much i've got a frog stuck in my throat as i'm eating these rather nice chocolatey things that george's wife made she keeps popping over with little bags full of stuff it's very nice all right <clears throat> so we're going to build a subframe here which is going to hold the top mounting for the rear suspension unit so what i've done here is i've used my nice uh, adjustable things to set this at 13 and a half inches which is what we've been working on all along now what i was going to do was use a couple of the cold, taller ones put them on there put a tube in and make a, a top that I could mount the stub mounting onto and hold it in the position I want while I make the tubes but I rethought this because I know not many of you have a jig laid around at home so we're going to try and keep on doing it in a way that you could do it so we're going to use these things that I made I think I made these for the very first bike the one I ride I may have shown them before anyway what they are is drilled to different lengths of rear suspension unit now i use inch box section which is slightly bigger than in general the mounting on the top and bottom of the suspension units so at the bottom end i just reduce the diameter the, diameter, the width a little so what you do is you put that on there like that and then I have to put a little bit of a bigger washer on we put that on there and then we set that to wherever we want it to be I won't set it exactly now I'm just showing you tighten up get a good firm grip on it then you see what we'll do is this that's the 14 inch mark i think i'm pretty sure oh, i'll check it i think that's a 14 inch unit so that's where we want the top mountain to be so we're going to make the mountains in a minute i'll show you a drawing of what they're going to be so you put your mounting in and just as we've done at the bottom you bolt it up and it's exactly where it's going to be on the frame now you could make this out of a piece of wood there's no reason why you couldn't make it out of a piece of plywood or whatever but you see how easy it is to set that up so what we're going to do is we're going to make a little piece and put it in there then we're going to need a piece from down there up to it and from there to it so we're going to do this piece first because this piece is just dead straight all we're going to do is cut it at the appropriate angle there and here we're using three quarter tube we're going to use a three quarter piece for the uh, stub we'll do a corp three quarters of an inch then once all that's tacked in on both sides we're set now i have made my mind up whether this top one to just make it straight or whether to put a bend in it so that it comes out and then just here because i don't want to make it wider across here just here it'll bend so that that then is nicely parallel with the center line of the, the bike so it'll make it a lot easier well, to do the corp there now also we're going to need something for the rear mudguard mount now I've done these two or three different ways on the bikes I've built last a couple of them I've done loops mine actually is just a single piece with a mounting on the end to go there so I haven't decided on that yet but this is the one we're going to do first. I've got two of these, by the way, so we can 
or I could do one side and then do the other side, but we'll put two of them. All right, so let me show you what we're going to make for the mounting. So this is what we're going to make. Now it may look familiar because if I sort of cover that off, that's exactly the piece we made for the bottom mounting. So we're going to make this out of uh, 4130 round. So this is the part that is in the frame. Okay, it's three quarter diameter. I've made it seven eighths so that I have just a little bit when the tube is coped on I'm gonna have just that sixteenth of an inch at each side then this is where the rear suspension unit will go so we here we go down to half inch because I'm getting both eyes top and bottom on the suspension units made to half inch that is seven eighths long and then this is where we put our three eighths nut so that will be threaded to three eighths fine it's about half inch I'll check exactly but it's you know the size of a, a washer, a spring washer and a nut and a little tiny bit sticking out the end. I hate to see bolts sticking out the end of nuts so I'll always just cut them so they're just fractionally out. So that's what we're going to do. So what we're going to do is I've got some three quarter. We will turn it down to half inch for seven eighths plus a half which is what one and three eighths. And then we'll do that half inch worth, we'll turn it down to three eighths and then thread it. Cut this off and face it off so that that's seven eighths of an inch long. We'll make two of those. Then once they're made, they fit into the uh, upright piece I just showed you that I'd made. By the way, the, um, the reason that the sort of dummy suspension unit actually is smaller at the bottom, you may have thought, well, it doesn't make any difference is because as I say I made that when I did my bike and the BSA B25 has the u-shaped thing on the bottom so it had to fit inside there for the bolt to go in all right so let's go over the lathe and do this this is a piece of three-quarter round stock which actually had already been turned down a little bit this is um, about 530 I think I measured that so this piece can nicely go down to half inch and this is our piece that we're going to turn down to 3 8 so I'll face it off down to there then we'll turn the whole of this to half inch then I'll measure again to half an inch from this end and then we'll turn this piece down to 3 8 and thread it so let me get this end off and then we'll start doing the turning Right now I've just skimmed along this to give me my zero and I've kept it actually slightly longer than a half for the nut so it's just over seven eighths maybe a sixteenth over and it is these don't have to be exact 565 so I've got to take 65 thou of it now what I'm going to do is take a little bit more off because don't forget this is going to get painted so there'll be a few thou of paint and if I made it exactly a half the suspension you wouldn't fit on and then I have to start sanding the paint off and then that would uh, get us down to bare metal more or less so it would defeat the object of painting it so I'll take a few thou under a half inch so let's get set up for that here's just a little bit of information for you uh, I'm getting my trials bike ready to paint and I've got half the frame stripped down so I was able to measure a couple of tubes where I've got the paint off part of the way and where there was still paint and sort of it would appear that epoxy primer and then colour mixed in with clear coat gives me about 16 thou on that so I'll take about 15 thou less so instead of 500 I'll make it 485 don't forget to keep an eye on my maths for me people and just shout out when I get it wrong so there's a bit of let's see there's just a bit of information for you you could say roughly that your paint is going to be between 10 and 20 thou thick on a tube right let's go
I'm putting this bit in especially for those people who like to see things going round and round. Stop and I'll find the calipers. Alright, let's see what we got. Four eighty six. That will do me. So now then I'm gonna measure from here to there seven eighths because I said this this isn't critical, but I do want that to get the full seven eight for the suspension unit I to go on so I'll measure that there at 7 eighths then we'll turn this piece down to 3 eighths and put a thread on it so there's that marked this is 486 we want it down to 375 so that's 111 so that's 55 and a half okay so we'll do that in two goes we'll do it in 30 and then 25 Okay, let's see what we've got. Now we should be a couple of thou over still because we just took 55 off, not 55 and a half. Well, 378. Yeah, 378. So I need three more thou off. So I'll take that off and then I'll set us up to do the threading. Right, since it's just three eighths and a Pretty short bit of threading. We're going to use the doodad that goes into the tail stop that holds a die and just do this bit a little bit by hand. Yeah. It's difficult trying to get round the lathe and round the uh, camera and everything and hold stuff I'm gonna, I'm gonna have to move you right I've set the lathe to the slow speed so let's just do it under power That's it. Okay, there it is. Nicely done. Let me just uh, 
put a file you know you can't see much from that distance I'll just put a file on the end and then I'll uh, show you the final bit so there's the first one made all there is is on this we have a nut So as you'll see in a minute, this bit goes into that uh, temporary, or shall we say, imitation rear suspension unit, and this will stick out the back, so I can just put the tubes onto that. Now, on the jig I have for doing the B25s, or if you made, if I'd made the jig so it had a plate to hold this, what I would do is in this end, I would drill it quarter inch and tap it and then the plate on the jig it would go up to it like that and you'd put a bolt in here and that would hold it in place so let me make another one of those oh and for those eagle-eyed amongst you who may have spotted let me pull you back slightly that in the tool holder that bit was missing i was just changing them over when i got a delivery of mulch and i went out to deal with the driver and I completely forgot about putting that in but don't worry tool holder was locked onto the tool post and well as you can see everything came out all right so let me make another one of those all right I've got a straight edge now so I can actually put that there and I can see it through there get it straight so that's going to be the bottom of the tube there going to be the bottom of the tube there all right it's that's it okay so took some doing what we got there okay so we got that where we want it now I need to know this one and I'm not going to prat her up with the uh, trying to make clever angles because I'll get it wrong I'm just going to put that there where I want it there and where I want it there And then I can use this edge to draw my line like that. So let me go and cut that. So let's see if I got this right. My word, my word. All right, what I'm going to do is do this end and when I've got that right so I can put it in there, I'm going to mark this here. Then I'll use a square, transfer that to the other side and then I'll just make a duplicate of this one. Then if I've got two exactly the same and mount it at the same side there then this is going to have to be right going to have to be equal so we'll be fine so that's the next thing to do hold on now we're going to be working at the top here so let's put this in Right, so that is in there. And I'll move you around. Now you can see that is being held exactly where it will be on the frame. So I can put this piece onto it and then I can put that piece onto it. And it will all be right. So let me move you back yet again. Now I'm going to try and show you me doing this but I'll probably get in the way. There's the piece you've just been looking at. So what I'm going to do is I'm putting this on here where it wants to be and trying not to get into the way of you seeing. We're going to mark that. All right. So now I know that's my corp to go around it. And what I'm going to do with this, seeing as that is three quarters, 
this is three quarters I'm going to use I'm going to put it level in the mill and use a three I'll cut it off just here and use a three quarter inch end mill and come in up to this line and then hopefully that'll be right what I'll do is I'll I'll go a bit higher than that and we'll try it so here's the setup I've got a couple of v-blocks in here so that this is held nice and tight use the square there it's touching top and bottom so that is vertical and we're going to use a three quarter inch mill to come in here as I say just short of our line then we'll try it because this is easy to duplicate come back set it up if it's uh, if we still need to go a little bit more so excuse me showing you all this and then I'll just I won't show you me doing the other side I'm not going to bother sort of centering this finding the sides and so on because it's going to be easy enough to do that then we'll lock that a little bit of oil leaking out of there uh, why okay right let's get started blunt end mill and I thought it was a brand new one from in amongst the stuff I've got all right let's see what it's done well that was a little disappointing I've got to look into that as I say I thought it was a brand new one it was in its little plastic case and everything it looked felt sharp but with a little bit of dressing up I've marked here I've run a straight edge where is it from there to there so I know where it should go and I've also marked here and this now goes on there like that so I'll tack it at the bottom and tack it at the top then we'll do the one on the other side and then we can look at making the top piece but it's five o'clock so that's it until tomorrow right well it's a new day I made a second one of those I just made it identical to this one use my little magnet things to hold them in place so this is 28.8 degrees the other one's 28.8 and actually they fall right on the marks I've moved this one very slightly out because I was looking at the chain line and it was fine but I thought you know an extra quarter of an inch isn't going to uh, affect much but it just makes me feel a little bit better just ordered my sprockets up at DNC classics in uh, in Yorkshire there I guess it's in West Yorkshire don't think it's in the North Riding although they've changed all the names and I'm waffling on again so anyway what I'm going to do now is tack these so that they're all in place and then we'll make this top piece actually this top piece is so much closer here I think I'm just going to make it straight I don't see any point trying to put a bend in it's really short but what I am going to have to do hang on I'll show you when I do the coat for this it's going to be partly on there see so it's the top of it's going to come up to here but obviously it should go further down so this is going to have to be a clever little corp it's got to be at an angle it's got all sorts of bits and pieces so I'll probably do these the one at this side is going to be easy it's hardly going to be anything being three quarter tube on to um hang on being three quarter tube onto one and three quarter that's almost you know that's just the least little curve here I'm going to have to get clever 
and I think it would be too much to try and bring it out here and then bend it in so I'm just going to bring it straight to there and then we'll make a loop for the back all right so let me tack these so I've brought these two in completely at the bottom so now we can look at the top now I was looking around just to see if I had any three-quarter tubes some sort of off cuts and I found that that I'd made I don't know why I don't know why I didn't use it but anyway when I checked it it's gonna go in there nicely like that look so I've done this end which as I say is very very little in fact I'm all right now we've got a new battery in we'll try again I was just saying that there wasn't very much to take out of this in fact I might even have to ease the sides down a little bit but even with with this in that's almost actually bringing it round where you can see where it goes in there like that I've got to have it slightly at an angle as well as having it coat so what I'm going to do is mark it to do that coat first so it'll fit on there and it'll sort of bump like that then we'll just ease out the bottom and ease out the bottom and ease out the bottom till it goes up and fits nicely against that so let me go and do that right now let me walk around the other side here I've done the first little bit of work so that you see would be the corp for there if it was going on there it needs a little bit more work but as you can see when I put it in here it's going to need some of it taking out the bottom as well so it's gonna to have to slope to match this with a little curve this way on right so let me keep working on this with the file and what have you and then when it's close I'll bring you back all right oh, this is really difficult to get in so that basically goes on there like that where are we goes like that can you see that so it's not bad again beauty of bronze it'll fill the little bits there that actually should go like that but we do have one problem hold on I whittled away this end that much but uh, we're now too short so I'm gonna cheat I'm gonna make this in two pieces I'm gonna add a piece on the end so let me go and do that and we'll get this one bronzed in so this is how we're gonna do our little cheat Now I could have cut it back here but I'm going to make it right at this end because I need to have a mounting back here for the way I want to put the saddle on. So I'm going to have a little plate in here so that I can make a mounting. So that will make a nice little gusset plate also. So what we're going to do you see is we're going to put that on there like that. Then I've caught the end of that. We're going to put that on there like that. Gets a little bit fiddly. Where I'll get those things lined up. Actually, I can just use that for the bottom line. And then We mark it. And then I just cut a little piece off this and clag it onto that. All right. Right, well, there's the first side done. There's a bit more bronzing to do, which is awkward to get at. It's all cooled down now. So we will make sure that our suspension unit will still go on. There we are. 
Last thing I wanted was to find that that had tilted or something like that as I was bronzing. But anyway, that all looks good. All right, let me make the other one up because this, this thing here is a real bear to make. Uh, but I do have, wherever I've put it, the other bit of that you, and then we will make up our back half. Right, so now we have the two of these on while this one's coming. As I say, as always, I've got a little bit of bronzing to do where it's difficult. Once the frame's off, we'll do the rest of it. So they're on. So the next thing to do, I think I'm going to put a loop on. But I've got to decide which mudguard to use. I'll go and bring in a couple of mudguards and uh, while this is cooling. And then we'll see what's what. Just as an aside. It was 34 degrees when I got up this morning, it's snowing and it's laying and it's what? April the 22nd. So what I have done is put the wheel back in and I've got it chopped up so that is actually fractionally more, about a quarter of an inch or so more than the maximum height that it will go to with the suspension compressed. There's a bit of tyre give us a bit more it's actually a front tire I think but it doesn't matter it's going to still going to be that's three inches so a little bit more than that all right now I have unfortunately I only I have a short type but I didn't have a new one of the long type so I dug out an old uh, cut about one the end of this is being cut off a little bit to see what I want because don't forget I've got to have a silencer in here somewhere and an oil tank now if I put this one in all right I'm going to make a little bracket on the box section there to hold it and it'll go about that and funnily enough uh, on my bike with my frame that's more or less exactly where the mudguard is. Sort of level with the edge of the mudguard is just about where the suspension mountings are. So it's going to be something like that and it would be slightly longer here. Okay, so I could put a cross piece here and a mountain or I can, uh, on the B25s, I mount it down on the original mudguard mounting so I can mount it down there and then we have our loop but as I say how much room do I need for an oil tank and silencer now the shorter ones I'm having to walk around here a bit a sort of bull taco type or bikes that have a a big air box in here so the air box forms this bottom part of the mudguard then you only need something like that you see there we put a cross piece with a mountain and the loop and actually that's the way I have it on my bike now I've got the bigger oil tank on because I made the oil tank I curved it and it forms the back part there. Hold on a second, I'll go and get that oil tank. Right now, of course, on my frame, I don't have the tube here. I have two side tubes. But that's the oil tank that I used for... Whoops. Yeah, that's right. I thought they were the outlets, but no, they're the mountains. So that's the oil tank I use on that. It goes... Ah! oil hold on all right we're back i put a couple of little just a couple of bits of paper towel bonged in there so can't really get it in but you can see see this back part so if i'm going to make an oil tank like that i can make it that way now of course the thing with the B25 is Sansa goes in here on the other side so the pipe just comes through 
and goes to there. <clears throat> I'm not sure where I can put this because we're going to have exhaust pipes on this side. I and do it the same. You can come there, have a silencer there. I'll have to have a look, see how other people have done them. But anyway, I'm tending towards, because I want a biggish oil tank, I'm tending towards filling this with oil tank, which would mean using this one. Right, so cross piece, mount, loop, double mount. Yes, that's what we're going to do. So that's where that oil went and I saw it dribble out. So let me cut a little piece of tube to fit in there and we'll bronze it in and then we'll make a little bracket. We'll get that centered. So there's our cross piece and bracket and now I've got it fitted and put the mud guard up to it. I wish I'd moved it forward but we will persevere so hang on I'll just put some nuts and bolts down. What did I do? Oh, there we are. Right. I'm not going to go in there. That's crap, isn't it? See, with this, let me open you out. With this being so long, see, for instance, on my bike, it only comes to about there. So that gives you plenty of room to have a saddle in. That is rubbish. Absolute rubbish. I'm going to saw that off and do it again. Man. All right. Leave me to it. There we go. That's better. I've moved it from here to there. That's about as close as I can get. Still have clearance for the tyre and everything. So, that was a bugger. Annoyed me that. Anyway, next thing we've got to do is our loop here. And I think the... Um, where's the ruler? The three quarter inch die is what? I think seven inches on the center line. So that's that's not far off being exactly right. This is a six inch mud guard. So it's not far off being right for that. So let's go and get some tube and see about making up a loop. Right, so here's where we left off yesterday. And today didn't start too well. I, had to, I have a little Toyota pickup, Tacoma, and it had a recall for rear springs. So I booked it in this morning. I actually had to get up at seven o'clock in order to get it in. I come out, there's an inch of snow and I jump in the pickup and the battery dies on me. I tested it and it was just, I was given 12 volts, but under load it was bad. So I had to clear snow off and get the other car out, get the jump leads and all the rest of it. So anyway, so we're gonna make a loop here. And as I said, the, um, the dies for the three quarter inch are seven inches on center and now I've got my proper tape.
this is eight and a bit inches wide so seven inches on center would mean that I'm barely out because uh, center to center from there to there is only is seven and three quarters so I'm three quarters of an inch out so what I'll do is I'll bend it to the 180 degrees and then we can just spring it a little bit actually when I bend it to 180 it'll spring out when I take it off the die so what I do is I, I might not keep pressing it in all right so how long do we want it do you know these plastic mud guards get dirty so easily I reckon we'll just take it we're gonna obviously it's gonna go up take it to about there eh? do you think well if I make the arms to there because it'll swoop round like that so it'll actually go up there so if I make the arms eight inches long that should be fine so I'll make them longer than that and that'll give me a chance to try it and <clears throat> cut these corpse to go on there so let's go on and get the bender out right then I've got the three quarter inch die and follow it in got some tube clamped in got that set to zero notch I'll show this for those of you who haven't seen this thing working. Works on this ratchet system. And then when you get to the end of the ratchet, which is basically 90 degrees, the die has different holes in it and this has different holes in it. So you take that out. You go around, you line it up with the next hole, and that gives you another set of gores. Just keep doing it like that. For three quarters tube, there's, there's virtually no I could do without the extension, even. Around to a hundred degrees. Let me switch you off. This is boring. Right now, I've taken it round to 180. As I've taken the tension off, it's sprung back to 175. Okay. Now we need eight and a half inches. Right, so that's eight and a quarter. Let's see if this actually springs back anymore. When the tension's off completely. See, that's sprung back to nine. So we've got to go a few degrees more than 180. That's basically it, because that's eight and a half there, and I might be making it slightly shorter, and that's eight and a half there. It's 
to make sure we're not going to spring anymore. Yeah, it sprung back a little bit. See, this is the thing, you can't just take it out and think you're, uh, you're right. We've got to bend it a bit more. As I said, we can always pull it out a little. Okay. That's reading eight or thereabouts. Let's see what it's like now. It's completely loose. Yeah, eight and an eighth. So I'll just, well, I'll go and check it because, you know, I've got a little bit of movement. Uh, and then we might have to just pull it out very fractionally, put one end in the vise and just pull it out. So let's move over to the bike. Right, let's see what we've got. What I'll do is I'll put it in the right spot on that side. As you can see, it needs to come over about a half inch. So let me go and give this a bit of a tug. Right, <clears throat> I'll tell you what, you can really tell it puts some stresses into this because when I you give it the least little pull and you can feel it go but pushing it back in nah all right so let's put that on there and that is spot on so do we want it to be that long no nah, I don't think so we only want it to be about there Be a bit more like that. Let me move you around a bit. There, what do you think of that? I think that's just too far back. I mean, I know it comes a long way back on the, the other ones. But the further back it is, of course, the longer it is, the more strain on it if you actually fall off, which some of us do. I think that's good enough. Well, actually, this is nine inches. And you may remember I decided eight inches. I could hit nine so I would have something to play with. So if I take an inch off, I think that would be nice. All right, let me go and lop an inch off each end and then we'll take another look. Right, let's have a look. Now this will come forward slightly when I put the corpse in. Yeah, I think that's fine. Right, let me go and uh, put a little cork in each side, and then we'll see what it's like. Now there we have it cut to length, and the little corks put in. The piece of cardboard up there is to simulate the thickness of the little bit of plate that will be there to make the mounting on. So I think that looks fine. So let me tack it in place here and then we'll look at it again when it's just tacked at the top and then if all that looks fine we'll take the mud guard out and we'll bronze round as best we can right what we want here is two mounting points so we're going to make it in one but we've got a curve and it's going to curve over the mud guard so it's going to be difficult so what you do is you make it much wider than you want it the first thing we're going to do is we're going to put we're going to bend it to match the curve there right then when it fits there we can mark the inside and cut it and then it'll be fit in this and it'll be that then we can nicely decide on our shape out here okay so let me go and put a bit of a curve in this and then we'll put it there now I've put the mud guard back in. See I've got some marks for the center line. 
I've put a little bit of a curve in that which just fits in there and I've marked how I want it to be here I'm going to use quarter inch so then what we do is we put that in there we get all our center lines lined up we put that where we want it now it's actually going to go down a little bit but for the time being now what we do is we mark the inside And there you see is our curve for the inside of this so it doesn't stick out. So we'll cut this out, cut that out. I'll shape that in there a little bit more when I, but I want to make sure that's all right first. So I'm going to cut this piece out and check it. So I've cut that curve and what you'll see now is when I line everything up, well, I'm not sure if you can exactly see it from where you are, you see how it follows the curve in there now? I don't know if it's sticking out. So I can just put that like that and then nicely bronze that. It'll look really nice. And then I can mark these holes and drill them. So let me go and cut this shaped piece out. Now I've got it shaped. See, that's going to go on there like that. Got all my little lines lined up. And all I've got to do now is fathom out how I'm going to hold this because I want it to be right to get that angle although once it's in nicely I can put some pliers on them and just bend them a little bit to shape so I'll see if I can get a clamp on that to hold it and tack it and then I'll check it again I think if I extend the tungsten I can get it in there and at least put a quick couple of tacks in and the cardboard will protect the plastic and everything's lined up right so let me try so we've got that bronzed on as soon as it's cooled down these are virtually I tried it when I just tipped uh, tacked it at the back and these are very nearly spot on so a pair of pliers just to tweak it slightly to the curve of the mudguard yeah it's still a bit hot let it cool down, we'll put the mud guard on. Bent these down just a little and now they touch perfectly on there. You may notice that little black bit, see? I didn't quite manage when I was doing the other thing. So let me uh, centre that up, drill a couple of holes and then we're done on this. And there we go. It's all on nicely. Actually, I was looking at some photographs and the reason this is so short is A, I think I'm a little bit down there, but I noticed in a couple of photographs they use like the standard size girlings, which are 12.9 inch. I've used 14 inch. So if we take it as being 13 inch and slightly higher there, see, they could have been mounted right back here somewhere. But this is a 21st century otter, so we've got some slight modifications to make it more, uh, if not competitive, then at least a little bit easier to handle. So that's it for this week. Uh, next week I'll have the footrest mounts, I'll have the electronic ish, ig, ish, blah, blah, the electronic ignition. So I'll have the coil and the little box and everything. I'll be able to uh, find out where we're going to fit things. So next week, I think half of it will just be putting little brackets on and that will finish the frame. Are we uh, fully extended there? Just about. We'll have finished the frame. And then I think what I've got to do is the exhaust next. Because depending on where the exhaust goes, depends on where the oil tank goes. I'm going to put a pancake filter on there. So, yeah, we need the exhaust. All right. So that's it for this week. Oh, the snow's about melted. The sun's shining, but it's still bloody cold. All right, then. I'm done for the week. 
So you just stay safe and enjoy yourselves. <laughs>